Hey there. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for December 23rd of 2022. Yeah, sorry, I got some smudge smoke flying around here yet. And um, we're just going to have some solar flares going on here for a minute. I don't have a curtain for this window. So, hey there, everybody. Um, welcome to 50 Questions Friday. And if you are here live, please drop your questions onto the questions tab. And if you're here live, please do jump on the chat side. We have a lot of great people who always show up here and they help to answer questions and provide links and all kinds of fun stuff. So, yeah, I know. Isn't that a great solar flare? <laughs> yeah, like I said, I got a little carried away with the smudge there behind me. So, anyway. Um, Let's see. So we'll go ahead and drop into the heart space. And then we'll begin our whatever we're doing today. So, all right. So if you'd like to just close your eyes, put your attention to the physical heart, connecting heart to heart with the earth. That beautiful crystal sun within the earth and just breathing in that light and that supporting grounding energy. And you're always connected with Gaia. This is simply an exercise of allowing, of attention. Beautiful. Next, we connect with source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that, which resides within the heart. Just taking in that deep breath, expanding that light of creation. And the third breath is just becoming that column of light that is grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right. Well, good morning, John from Minnesota, Victoria from the Sierra Foothills, Mount Desert Island, Maine, Connie, Merry Christmas. Um, so let's see where to begin today. Um, <laughs> sorry about the solar flares. All right. So let's see where to begin. Um, I guess I'll make a couple of announcements first here really quick after I shut my phone off there. Um, so we just did a thing here for Solstice. Um, it was our first installment in a series called the uh, Lightworkers Academy. Um, so we're just going through different activations, attunements. Um, we're going to do it on Wednesdays. So if you haven't signed up for that, be sure to go to twistedsage.com. Um, if you go to the bottom of the page there, there's our blogs on the home website of twistedsage.com, not twistedsage.shop.com. Um, but right there on our homepage, the bottom is our blogs. And that one blog has on there the Lightworkers Academy. And so if you go to that page, you can sign up for the email notifications, which will be just like here at 50 Questions Friday. Uh, it's a different mailing list. Basically, once you sign up there, then we'll send you a link for the live live stream um, here on our app Livestorm. And then it'll also be recorded just as 50 Questions Friday is and put on YouTube. So anyway, it's um, something that I was just trying to kind of separate a little bit, 50 Questions Friday from you know gearing this towards more of uh, you know the questions on tools and things. And then all the fun activations, attunements, and energy work, and all the woo-woo stuff we're trying to uh, keep over there at the Lightworkers Academy and uh, just share some of those processes. So let's see. What do we have today? Um, one of the announcements is check out our calendars, you guys. I'll move this in front of the solar flare. So this really cool, wonderful calendar this is January. So I'm going to show you guys a preview of every month. And when we get to that month, I'm not going to show you ahead of time. But this is January. Um, 
you can still get these calendars. They're 79 bucks. They always will be. And with these calendars, as we've touted, you get like $500 worth of free tools and all this fun stuff. Well, look here. What is going on for January with this calendar is you get 12% off of all Tauruses because this is a picture of Tauruses on Brenda's kitchen table as she's been working on them, or maybe they're on the floor. Also, what you get for owning this calendar is a wisdom wand zipper pull. Oh my goodness. Do I have one in my pocket? I usually do. So it's the, the smaller wisdom wand. It's not the uh, pendants, but it's the, uh, the wisdom wand about that big. It's still the um, brass and copper. Uh, it has a little keychain fob on it. I think that's like a $50, $58 value, I believe is what that is. Um, and if you own a calendar, you happen to get one of those free with a minimum $10 purchase. So you could order your 12% off Taurus and get your Wisdom Wand Mini for free. So that's this month, uh, coming to January. Also for um, new product offering, we have the cell phone tab boxes. Oh my goodness. These are now going out into stores. Um, we're pretty happy and excited about that. And we've also made an offer on our website. Um, we do have the cell phone protector retail kit um, that's on the website. And actually, we're giving everybody the opportunity to just, um, who's not a brick and mortar building place, if you want to deal on cell phone tabs, you buy 10, you get two free. Um, so that's like a, you know, that's, what is that, like a $118 value of, of free cell phone tabs when you buy them by the dozen. And I think that is all of the uh, business style plugs that we have here for today. And just checking in here on chat again. Hey, Renard, you're in Florida. Hey, awesome. Well, I hope you enjoy the South Dakota weather down there. I heard it's supposed to get chilly in Florida, too. Um. And hey, Nika from Southern Cali, you got a silver halo yesterday and oh my God, went from Russian irritated to calm, happy and in the flow. I wear it like a headband to hold back my hair. That's awesome. Yeah, I love the halos. They are pretty amazing. Hey, Nancy, Merry Christmas to you. Hey, Kendall. Yep, we'll catch you later, Kendall. Hey, Matthias. Yeah, I'm glad you're here too with everybody. So if if you haven't joined us before, it's really, we create this beautiful sacred container um, that 50 Questions Friday is when we all come together, we're all here soul to soul in this beautiful sacred container and amazing shifts begin to happen just by stepping into the space and just being um, because we are all master beings and it is our our souls that are here helping to hold this beautiful, safe, sacred container. And, um, you know, things just start to happen when we're in those great spaces like that. Um, let's see a uh, question. How does one know one is a light worker? Well, so <sighs> light workers is, so the reason I, I, I really feel the reason that this little mini course got named Lightworkers Academy is because I'm really trying to help to bridge between those who feel like they are light warriors that are out there fighting the dark. Because I did that for 10 years, almost 10 years. I was, you know, very, very good at what I did of um, being this light warrior fighting the dark. Well, we've stepped into a whole different paradigm in this world. And the real light is not the white against the black. It's not the dark against the light. The true sense in light worker in this new paradigm is right here in the heart. 
It is your light. It is the light that we cultivate. So in the Light Workers um, Academy, it's the light you wield is all your own. It is your light. So we are each and every one of us a light worker because we are cultivating our own expansion of our consciousness. I see our light as consciousness, as soul. Um, so truly a light worker is anybody who is in touch with themselves and who is doing that deep work. And that deep work isn't going out and clearing, you know, cell phone towers and cemeteries and things, though that is part of what we're going to be doing in our Lightworkers Academy series, is giving you the tools that you can go out and, and play in your outside realm of anchoring columns of light and doing the clearing work and just using that as a stepping stone of doing all of the outside work because truly everything out there is truly begins right here your entire external reality is all in here and so that's truly what i want to bring through in this whole series with the light workers is to step from fighting and feuding with the dark and coming in and getting your own space cleared connected and cleared out um so everybody is definitely a light worker that's that's what we're all doing here hey malit um so anyway <laughs> boy that solar flare is something on the lens here today isn't it well if you guys don't mind i'm not going to hold my hand up here the whole time but um let's see we'll go ahead with questions uh one of the first questions that i had from the internet was are there any tools that bring through the field and the work of what Brenda does in her sessions. Um, so really, as we have been creating these tools and we create the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspect of the tools, which is where all the magic and, and miracles occur within these tools is in these higher fields. And it is simply a toolbox. You can consider all of these etheric templates, as we call them, is simply um, potentials and possibilities that are there and available for the soul. So then when a person comes in and he's holding on to a specific one of these tools, or you're in the field of one of these tools, it is bringing through that remembrance, the potentials and possibilities. It's holding space. It's doing everything that this field can do for you to do the work. Because truly, um, the work that Brenda does, the consciousness work, she holds a phenomenal space and a phenomenal field. It's what we're trying to put into the tools is the same spaces and fields that we can hold. Because these are all training wheels for us to learn how to hold these spaces and, and to be these spaces and to emit these spaces into the world. Because this is where, you know, this is, that's the true light work is, is being in the heart and allowing your light to just radiate into the world without trying to fix or change. Um, just bringing light to the world, consciousness. Um, so the work that Brenda does and the work that I do or the work that anybody does with consciousness work, with um, yeah, the, whether it was the older work that we did with just using from the heart space, imagination, visualization, and intention, that is how, for years, Brenda is able to do things like push a rib back into place from, you know, a distance. Uh, it's just visualization, imagination, and tension. But, um, so, basically, no, the tools cannot replace consciousness work. But all of these tools are here to support that work. Um, and so to give an example, I just, I just got a one star rating on our, um, on Google for Twisted Sage this morning because somebody has had the tools for about a year now and they said, well, man, my life was perfect. Everything was flowing good. And then all of a sudden all this stuff comes up and it's chaos and it's, you know, and everything that they are describing is simply the release work it's it's them being dislodged by their soul um you know so uh, 
it's not always all just fun, beautiful butterflies and fluffy bunnies. It really is not. Um, as we step into our light and our power, we begin to shed. We begin to release all of those old anchors and paradigms and structures of limitations. Not only structures of belief limitations, but energetic structures that keep you in cycles, keep you just doing the same crap you've done for lifetimes. Um, and it, it, it's breaking, it's breaking open all of, all of these, um, limitations, all of these cycles. And when you start to clean up things, it's kind of a mess. We all know when you spring clean your house, it's going to look kind of upside down and really bad before you get everything cleared out and put back together. And so this truly is a spring cleaning that we receive, um, a deep cleaning is, is what these tools are here for, but we're doing it in a way that is with the most grace and ease possible. And that is to what these fields are doing for us and holding the space for us to bring things through with grace and ease. When we start to fight everything, fight, um, you know, hold on to the stuff, um, you know, that's when things get harder. That's when, your soul, the universe really starts to pummel you with that spiritual two by four until you just surrender. You just let go. You're like, okay, I let go of that. And then everything just flows so much smoother then. Um, but you know, it's not just these tools. It is the state of all consciousness and humanity right now. This is what we're doing is we are letting go. So Anyway, I still need to respond to that one star rating on Google because um, I'm not sure how to really approach this person because um, <laughs> you know it, it's what we're all doing is we're all going through the work and you know it doesn't have to be hard and that's the thing is that I've always taken the hard way through all this release work and everything else that I do um, because I feel like I'm trying to kind of blaze a trail, so to speak, open a pathway, widen that, widen that corridor, um, by doing those things the hard way. But really, as Brenda says, um, it does not have to be hard. It does not have to be painful. It does not have to be difficult. And you can simply tell your soul that, and you as the human can simply be in a space of allowing, allowing all of the changes and shifts to occur. And the more that you step into that space of allowing, of trusting your soul and knowing that you are this powerful creator being and you're just allowing creation to flow through you, things get much more peaceful and graceful. Um, anyway, here we go. Some questions here on the questions tab. Uh, Fernando. Can you talk more about the new earth alchemy Gaia sphere in silver? It's a new tool that's been calling me recently. Yes. Um, so we used to make the little Gaia spheres, the one and a half inch Gaia spheres. It's a triangular uh, squished wire. And these little Gaia spheres in copper and in silver, they used to be in the divine I am energetics, which is really fantastic energetics. And now we've, we've, we've moved them all into the, the, the wisdom energetics. And so when you bring the wisdom energetics into a Gaia sphere, the Gaia sphere connects in with the heart of the earth automatically. And so when we put that wisdom energetics into this tiny little Gaia sphere and also that five and a half inch Gaia sphere, the Gaia spheres that we have are that five and a half inch golden fire, which is still a phenomenal one. But then that new energy one, which is the wisdom, that Gaia sphere is also doing the grounding like the grounding ring does. But these little one and a half inch ones that you can actually wear as a pendant, um, they are, they're, they're affecting a field of, about the size of a home. Um, you know, it's the size of a large room or of a small home. And, um, not only is the Gaia sphere, it's doing the heart connecting to everybody within your field, but it is also very grounding. And at the same time, out of that wisdom energetics, it is 
bringing more of your light in, more of your experience in to be brought into wisdom. So it is, it's, it's, it's helping you to even more gracefully pull in all of your stuff to alchemize it, to bring it in as wisdom, light, and consciousness in a ground, in a, um, more graceful way because you also have the earth, which is this powerful transformer who is also holding space within there. So it's, it's really a, it's a pretty phenomenal, um, little Gaia sphere. It's a, it's a great little pendant. Um, and to answer anybody's questions about, okay, well, I have the divine I am one. And then we stopped making them for a little while. Um, you can simply bring your old Gaia sphere, your little tiny one and a half inch divine I am Gaia sphere, sit with it, ask your soul, ask the Gaia sphere to bring in those new energies. And it happens. Um, simple and easy to upgrade that divine I am into the wisdom. It's just an intention and your attention onto it from the heart space. Hey, Marie, where does one place a tool for the electric blanket? Is it on the dial or is it where the cord plugs into the blanket? Is the new energy ring the best tool to use? Um, so on the, the electric blanket, I would put it on the dial. Um, you can actually slip it. You can slip it over the cord and bring it down to around the dial. It's... Um, yeah. So, you know, I actually, because I was trying to see, because a lot of things, um, there's there's a lot of appliances and such that you can plug into your household electric. And your household electric might have a, you know, one of our Golden Fire discs on it for household remediation. And you plug it in there and you have a smooth flowing, um, um, a beneficial field, a harmonized electromagnetic field. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say is a harmonized electromagnetic field will flow into your, um, your appliance. But then as soon as it hits different things like um, little transformers or motors or anything like that, then it disrupts that magnetic field again. But I, I feel like with an electric blanket, um, the electric blanket is going to stay harmonized through your dial. Um, that's what I was just trying to look at. So you can place your ring, um, you know, anywhere you can slip it over the cord and it can be anywhere along there. Or if you happen to have your plug in disc that you plugged into your household electric, that's going to work just fine for that electric blanket because that electric blanket will still be producing that beneficial energetics. Um, so let's see. And is the new energy ring the best tool to use? So you know, I, I do love those wisdom rings. The The wisdom rings are, are really a fantastic energetic because they do contain the energetics of the golden fire, which is the one that harmonizes electromagnetic fields so well. And so the wisdom rings, you can even get just like that. Gosh, I'm not sure if the little one and a half inch wisdom ring fits over a plug-in cord. I was going to see if I actually had one here. I could check it out. Um, but I'd say any of the, any of the wisdom rings, like the three inch, three and a half inch, um, yeah, any of the wisdom or newer, new energy rings are fantastic for that. It can even be that water alchemy ring. Um, and you know, you don't have to get too hung up on whatever specific frequency or name of the tool, um, because they're all they're all doing great things and they're all starting to kind of level out a little bit. I feel here in the next three months, um, there's going to be some huge shifts in, in the fields of these tools because we're going through such huge shifts in consciousness and vibration on the entire planet and the entire cosmos. Um, but you know, really you can use anything from a Wi-Fi ring, uh, which is the golden fire, um, to the wisdom rings. For, for that purpose. Uh, let's see, another question. Does the Badar coil open opposite the coil to place a witness in? So the Badar coil, um, open opposite the coil to place a witness within. So the Badar coil um, to place your witness. So the original Badar coil only created a one side field. 
but when we put the ring in with this with with this Bedar coil, this then produces a field that is the same on both sides, just like a ring is. So when you use these to place your witness, and and that's it's it's a radionic term. A witness would be writing a person's name on a piece of paper, like writing Aunt Martha. You put that onto there, and then you're broadcasting the energy to Aunt Martha. Um, or else some people actually will use um, actual DNA, like a person's uh, fingernail or a piece of hair, and they'll put it in there as a witness. But in all reality, um, it is your intention as you place that there. So you're going to just intend Aunt Martha is there, and she'll be there. But you can write it down, and that is your witness, and you place your witness in there. And that can be placed on top or on the bottom because this creates a, a field that is on both sides love these Bedar coils. Oh my goodness, still my favorite tool. I carry this in my pocket all the time. I use them everywhere I go and for just about everything. Um, so yeah, the, the Bedar coil, it's, it's pretty simple as long as it's anywhere within the field. So it can be underneath or on top. Uh, let's see. Did you in the business Twisted Sage appear in an episode of Small Towns or is it yet to be on TV? Oh, yeah. We had a PBS, um, a, a group that was going to do a pilot for PBS and they still have not released that pilot. And I'm not sure um, where they're at with that. But yeah, we were going to be on there on their pilot for uh, PBS and for Small Town. So haven't heard anything from them yet. Melissa. I'm going to be traveling to South America with very limited resources. Is there a tool you would recommend to have with me for protection? Um, you know, I think uh, just about anything that you have is going to, you know, be a great thing to bolster your field. Um, the wisdom wand. Oh my goodness. The wisdom wand is still my all time favorite tool is the wisdom wand um pretty phenomenal field that it holds and if you ever get into a pinch you can use it to do the work until you can get into the space and do the work yourself what i mean by that let's say for example um you know you you you, you pull a muscle or something and and you're you're kind of uh not in the space to be in the heart space and to just hold your awareness there so that you can send your light to do the work. You can simply pull this out and just do the work with that pulled muscle. Um, so it's an active tool that you can use for things that come up. So even if you come up to, um, you know, a dense energy space, you can use this to shift it. Just imagine running that energy to that space or creating the columns of light with this tool. Um, but then in a passive sense, just having it on the person is going to be creating that beautiful field around you that helps to um, harmonize and to alchemize energies that come into your field. So as a tool, um, you know, it can be a pendant and really that's the easiest thing to do is to to be wearing a pendant you know i i always wear my silver pendant um my my silver wisdom wand but i just love carrying the larger wisdom wand in my pocket all the time um and just having it on me but again any of these tools are going to be perfect for support and to help keep you grounded connected and radiant um, the quantum heart coil is another good one. Uh, the quantum heart coil is one that's, um, it really does put like this bubble around you. So the quantum heart coil is a great one. Um, if you just want to be in, in this contained nice space, uh, this, this container and then, you know, but it's just some my own belief that I don't like to just be a container in places that I go. I like to be a radiator and I like to clear the spaces as I go to them. So, you know, that's kind of the difference between the quantum heart coil pendant and the, um, and the wisdom wand pendant is they both create a beautiful container space, 
with the wisdom wand pendant is more about flowing out into the world and affecting the rest of creation. Um, so, you know, it, basically any of the tools, Melissa, are going to be just perfect. And um, so it might be that you just, um, whatever you have already available for the Twisted Sage tools. And again, for a limited budget, man, the uh, the Quantum Heart Coil Pendant is one of the least expensive tools that we've been able to to create and keep at that price point um because for 44 bucks you get the the copper quantum heart coil and it comes with the adjustable leather lanyard so it's actually a pretty dang good price on that tool um uh, Victoria, can you talk about the physical healing potential of the Bader coil with ring? I have one that seems to want to live in my live on my stressed shoulder. So basically with the with any of the tools that we create, um, you know, this Bader coil field, when we created this and it has all of these extra potentials and possibilities, it the energetics of the Bader coil went into all of the wisdom tools. So basically any of the wisdom tools that you have, I feel are the most beneficial for doing the healing work because the healing is simply clarification It's clearing energy. It's, it's harmonizing, um, you know, cause really healing is nothing more than release and rebalance. Um, so, all these fields are harmonizing. So you have your rebalance right there. The releasing part is something that the wisdom tools and that includes the Bader coil and the wisdom wands and all of this are the, the most, they have the highest potential for releasing the core issues of what's going on. I mean, soul level, lifetimes past, multiple lifetime issues that we carry. Um, the wisdom tools are the best at that. So with the beta coil and you're having to, you know, it's wanting to be on with your stress shoulder. So when you bring that field up there, there's a few different ways that you can do the work. Um, but it is all about that surrendering and allowing of, of, of the release of that because this, the sore shoulder is stemming from somewhere. Um, it's, it's energetic. It's, it's your energy. It's, 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 it's here for you. And so you may use that beta coil on your shoulder, but you still have to go into the heart space and simply make, make your statements to your soul. Talk with your soul, talk with your consciousness, your light, that's your soul. And just simply ask for this energy pattern to be released. Um, you know, the wording, the wording and concept does not have to be specific when you're in your heart and you're talking with your soul because your soul understands beyond words. So you don't even need to formulate the words if you don't want, but it actually, yeah, formulate the words because we're still mind, body, spirit. And so we still have to get the mental on board, which is part of doing any kind of ceremony. It is for the mental. So when you put the Bader coil onto your shoulder, going into the heart space and just asking the soul, well, not even asking the soul, just saying, Hey, I release. I, I no longer choose to participate in this experience. I ask that this experience be brought into wisdom. And that's where the healing takes place is taking any of these energies that are feeling discomfort or limiting or anything like that. It is simply us recognizing that that limitation or that squeezing or whatever that energy is being in the heart space and simply saying, I choose to no longer participate. I choose to release this. I choose to be complete with this pattern. Oh, and I feel a lot of you are doing that in this very second. That you're just making that choice. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm complete with this. And then 
give it time. Don't fight it anymore. Trust that you have made your choice with your soul and that the soul in the universe is clearing it out, that everything is shifting and moving now instead of being stuck. And sometimes these things can occur instantly and be complete. And sometimes they may take a little longer. Um, but just, just trust and allow your soul knowing that you have released this, that you've made your choice and no longer, um, play in that energy. JR, are the tools, the jewelry transferable to other people? Will it contain my energy or do I have to clear it? Uh, no, actually everything is self-clearing. So even though you may have a piece and it just starts to feel like you and, oh man, it's, it's just, it's your energy. Well, it's because it's your energy. It's, it's, it's your light. It's your soul. Um, because every one of the pieces that we create is all about working with your light and your energy. But then, um, you know, and it's not really, it's not held within, it's not held within the physical tools. These are simply the space holders. So all of that, it, it's your energy. So when you hand over your wand to somebody else or your jewelry, it then is theirs. It is, it doesn't carry any residual from you because they are always self-clearing. So it doesn't carry any residual. So you can just hand it off and then it becomes theirs because it starts to work with their light, their soul, their frequencies, the things that they need. Um, you know, so each tool is going to affect everybody individually differently. And there's, there's no crossover of energies. Uh, Brenda, what do you use your Bader coil for? Um, my Bader coil, I use it to set everything that I consume on, whether it is an oil or a supplement, you know, essential oil supplements, my hot beverages, whatever it is, um, you can shift the energetics of it. Um, the beta coil is basically something that's just going to, um, it shifts the energy of everything. Um, so if you have a bottle of supplements or your essential oil, and you put your oil or your supplements onto the coil and you leave it set for, I don't know, like an hour at the most. Actually, it only takes just a few minutes. But you leave it set for a few minutes and then, um, then it's complete. And then all of your oil or all of your um, pills or whatever it is have all been shifted in that bottle. And so you're good to take your Vedar coil and use it for something different. Um, so it is simply, uh, it's not only clearing, but it is, is raising the frequency and vibration, like I say. So if you have a medication that uh, may be from pharmaceutical land that carries some eth extra energetics that may not be beneficial, it clears those. It clears any of the non-beneficial energies and it harmonizes that to you. So when you place this onto here, it is making the contents of this be more harmonized to you. If you are, if you have your, let's say, like, let's say you have um, a, a baby in the house and you take your bottle of formula and you put your bottle of formula on that, you just have the intention, hey, this is for my little one. I'm going to put it right here onto this Vedar coil for just a couple minutes and it's going to shift it to the energetics for my little one. So you have the intention that it's working for your little one. Then your little one's soul comes in and is the one who is in charge of harmonizing this to his or her highest and best good. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of one of those things that we always say with the tools is just play with them because you can never do any harm and you can never do wrong with these tools. So, um, yeah. Bader coils are pretty phenomenal though. Uh, can you put more than one name on the Bader coil with the ring? Uh, question from Kaz. Yes, most certainly. So if you're using a tensor field generator, like what I have here on the mic or the Bader coil or whatever it is that you are broadcasting energy to, to people or places, you can put as many people and places on here as you wish. Um, and it's going to broadcast. It'll be a separate 
energetic for each person or each place. Uh, Kaz, I've been dealing with a female customer relations from a bank. Whenever this woman was going to ring me up, my solar plexus felt tied up in heavy knots. I placed my key on my solar plexus and it felt calm. Is this the disharmonious energy coming from this woman or is it mine? So anytime anything creates a reaction within you, it is yours. Um, what's outside of you is like, I liken it to a tuning fork and you have that same tuning fork within you. So if you come on, if you come to a person or a situation, that's this person or situation. And it's just like, oh man, that's icky. Look for the other side of the tuning fork within you. Look for the source of that ickiness because there's really truly nothing out here that's creating that it is your own internal it's your reaction so when you have a reaction to anything that means that you have something here that is resonating with this so when you find that you have something that's resonating just go into the heart release it say okay i see you thank you for your service I release you. So that's with anything. You see it and you recognize it. You don't have to mm, dissect it and look at it. You simply recognize it as energy, as a pattern, as, as something. And you see it, you recognize it, and you say thank you because it is here in service to you. You say, thank you. I am complete. I release you. I see you. Thank you. I am complete. I release you. And again, the specific words aren't what's needed when you're working with your soul. Your soul understands. But you still have to, from the mind, you have to be like, okay, I thank you and I release you. When you say that I thank you, it's because that truly is a service. And when you can say, I thank you for creating that horrendous reaction within me, then you are, you're taking um, responsibility for your side of the vibratory tuning fork saying, thank you. That means that you understand, Hey, this was for you. And then I release you. So once you see it, you recognize it, you kind of own it, but you don't really own it, but you, um, yeah, I think you understand what I'm saying and then release it. So anyway, make it simple. Um, and that's it too. Simplicity is the key from working within the heart. And that's it too, is you have to be in the heart when you do these. So, um, when you come to that woman, that bank teller, you know, and you don't have to do it right there. You can actually walk away and you can do it at a distance. So, so Kaz, just simply go into your heart, see this woman, and um, just send her gratitude and light and 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 thank you. And I release, I release us from carrying this. I release us from this co-creation. <sighs> Beautiful. Whew. Okay, Jody, I have all the elementals. What are some of the ways to use them? Uh, so the elementals are ones that, again, most of us just take the elementals and place them around where we have awareness with them. You can place them on your altar or make mobiles and hang them up around the place, um, leave them sitting in places where you see them. Because basically the elementals are... Um, they still produce a field and an energetic, but they're more about um, that that symbol and that field um, to bring a reminder to you uh, about this elemental. Um, so let's say you have the 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 plymella, the the wind, and the plymella is one that um, if you want to move energies, you know, um, just you simply go into the heart, you connect with that 
energy mover, that energy, that consciousness of Climella. And you just ask that it comes in and helps to move the energies. Um, you know, the fire elemental come in for, for helping to clear out emotional energies. The elementals are, are very much, um, it can be used as a tool as such, um, working with these consciousnesses, these energy fields of the elementals. Um, you can invite them in, you know, it's kind of like with Hedega, the water elemental. You can invite in Hedega, the water elemental, to, to step into your field and help to clear energies, to help to smooth and harmonize energies. And you can you can even ask the elemental to step in and, and help with hydration and releasing within the physical body, things like that. The, the chasel, the fire elemental, is a great one for releasing dense, stuck emotions in the body. And you don't have to own the elemental. You can just, you know, the physical one, you can just simply ask for that energy, that consciousness to step in to help you do the release work. And it's the same as bringing in Gaia and asking Gaia for the help. Because when Gaia comes in, I mean, it's the elementals are there in service too. Um, so, you know, just kind of getting to know the, the elementals and their, their energy fields and asking them to work with you throughout daily things is really a great way to, to work with those elementals. Um, and of course you can just simply place them around. Um, you know, usually the, the plymella, the, the, uh, the wind elemental, I usually hang that one, you know, all over the house. And I just intend that that's smooth energy. Um, you know, then the, the Kaleem, the air elemental, I'll hang that up just to intend for clean air. Um, so just kind of intuitively feel into them and just play with them, recognize them. And that really is a great way to start working with them. And then you'll be more intuitively drawn to work with them in your specific way. So basically just connecting with them and they'll show you. Uh, JR, is the beta coil more potent in transforming food water than the three and a quarter inch alchemy ring? I really feel the Badar coil is faster and more transformative for water, food, supplements than just a, um, than the three and a half inch earth alchemy ring. I mean, but I think maybe that is because I can really see and feel the field from the Badar coil. And when I see that field and it just, it brightens me up. Um, I think that because the wisdom rings carry the same energetics as the beta coil does. So these wisdom rings, the, the earth alchemy or the healing hands or any of the wisdom rings is really carrying the same field as the beta coil. I think that it is my attention with the Badar coil because I can see that energy and I just feel it and it. Just like I say, it lights me up. So I think it is me who makes the Badar coil faster and more proficient than the water alchemy ring. So I think it's me because we're powerful creators. These are training wheels. They hold spaces and fields for us. But I think it's my attention and my underlying beliefs maybe about this tool that makes it more so than this tool. So you can simply use the water alchemy ring and trust and know. And because it's going to work with your intentions and attention with that. So I really feel these two are going to do the exact same thing if you allow it to be so. Um, you know, because for years we were told not to put these tools in boxes, not to give them descriptions and things like that because um, we can limit them. And so I hope I have not done a disservice to any of the other tools by speaking so highly of the Badar coil. <laughs> so um, because... Really, this water alchemy ring is so flipping phenomenal, and it does carry the same field as the Vader coil does. 
Uh, Marie, I have the older gateway tab, Golden Fire Regeneration and Earth Resonance, fastened to my home's only electrical box. Will this be adequate to clear the electrics of the whole house? Yes. So basically, any of the any of the tools that you put onto your electrical box is going to be harmonizing the entire electrical field within the house all the way back to the transformer, whether it's up on the pole or the green ones that sit out in the lawn. And then every household that's connected to that transformer, it is also going to be harmonizing that entire field. So the thing about the about harmonizing the electrical fields of the home is, is that it's only harmonizing your electrical distribution system. It's not radiating throughout the whole house. So like, let's say you have a light switch or an outlet that has a field about 18 inches out from it. So within that 18 inch field, so then you can imagine you put in your plug in disc or you put it onto your electrical panel. Now then that light switch that you have or that um, outlet that's sitting right there beside your bed that you're always sleeping within your 18 inches of, that 18 inch field is now harmonized as are all of those like about a 12 inch field that comes out of your out of the Romex, the um, the electrical cables that go through your walls in every place. Those all create a small field as well. But then your biggest one is your fuse panel and your um, outside electrical meter. Those produce about a five and a half to six foot wide field out from that panel. And so that's really that main one that gets harmonized. And um, then everything that's within your home, um, all simple electronics get harmonized too. Um, it's just the ones that have um, that, let's say I always use a refrigerator as the example. So you have a harmonized electrical line that comes, you plug in your refrigerator into that harmonized line. But as that harmonized electromagnetic field comes into the refrigerator, it then hits those condenser pumps and everything else that then disharmonize that field again. It, it takes that nice harmonized field and it disharmonizes it. Um, so even though that breaker box um, plug or disc is on there, um, it might not harmonize some of your other appliances in the house. And same with like a Wi-Fi router. Um, if you plug your Wi-Fi router into that harmonized line, once that harmonized electrical hits that Wi-Fi router and it reconfigures that electromagnetic field, now then the electromagnetic field, the, the Wi-Fi itself, that, that electromagnetic field, is then it's no longer harmonized. And so that's like with the with the router that you would still want to put a Wi-Fi ring onto your router, even if you have your fuse box plug, because your router is going to be producing that a little bit of a disharmonized field. Um, or a tensor field generator in the home, because then a tensor field generator will clear out any of that Wi-Fi transmission as well. Samson, for the Betar, for me, the Betar coil with rings feels like a whole and complete radionic tensor synergy as a passive and intentional tool. How large of a field does the Betar coil embrace? So, for me, when I look, um, when I look at the Betar coil, and I'm not putting my, you know, I'm just kind of looking at it. I'm not putting intentions or or projecting anything i see the field about 18 inches tall so the 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 field innately i feel is about an 18 inch golden fountain so it comes up and then it kind of fountains out at the top it kind of you know splays out at the top so i see it as an 18 inch fountain that goes both directions but when i really put my awareness to it i'm like oh the beta coil it extends to about three feet about 36 inches. So it doubles its its height, its expansion. And so it really only expands about that much. Again, that's kind of innately because any of these fields, so you see this field here at the Bedar coil. I can use my, for my heart space, my visualization, my imagination, and my intention. And I can take this field 
And I can imagine this field moving over and sitting right on Aunt Martha over in Missouri or wherever. So as long as my awareness is there on this field, I can take this quantum field and I can put it on someplace else in an F in a different space and in a different time. So, um, you know, gosh, we do that a lot ourselves personally. You stub your big toe and you're like, oh crap, man, that hurts. And you take and you stop right then and there and you go into the heart and you imagine going back to the time that you stubbed your toe, wrapping it up with light, putting it on your Badar coil right there and doing the work of, of, um, of harmonizing that experience. And you can do in, in, we have that ability from the heart space, especially to simply move to a different time and space and harmonize something. So with the Badar coil too, um, you can expand it to cover the entire planet. You can use this Badar coil and as long as your attention and intention is there, you can expand that Badar coil, that field, and expand it around the whole globe and it will hold as long as you are in that space and holding that attention onto that you're visualizing that you're holding that space but then as soon as your attention is off of it then it just comes back and it's your beta coil again uh, linda what do you think about putting the beta coil inside of a do-it-yourself taurus I love the Badar coils with the Tauruses. Um, yeah, actually, Samson's got a really cool photo of that too. And man, that really blew me away. The first time I saw the Badar coil with the Tauruses with uh, Samson, who we just answered the question with, um, he put his Badar coil with his do-it-yourself Taurus. And it just, it amplifies things. It just makes the energy flow even more. Um uh, Linda, since the beta coil energy goes up, if using one on the body should be the ring. Oh, if the beta coil energy goes up, if using on the body, should the ring be placed towards the body? Okay, so the beta coil is the same on both sides. That 18 inch fountain of energy also comes off of this side of the coil, as well as off of this side of the coil. So both sides of this field are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if you place it this face up or this face up. Doesn't matter. It's going to be the same on both sides. Uh, JR, what tool can help a tuning fork work more optimally? If I can't put this, put it in the same hand as the tuning fork, so the resonance is not affected using a two inch harmonizer ring on the striker enough. You know, that's, that's kind of been one of those things too. Uh, my mom uses tuning forks all the time and I've used tuning forks quite a bit too. And, and just trying to figure out the best way to utilize a tensor ring with a tuning fork. That's something that we've kind of struggled ourselves with. It depends on too, on how you use the tuning fork, because if you, if you're able, if you use the tuning fork by using the butt end, you know, you, you ring it and then you stick it on to the body, putting a ring onto the body and then the base of the tuning fork right there. That is a fantastic way to use it. If you're using the tuning fork on the physical, but if you're using the tuning fork and you're just using it in the field, that's a tough one. Nope. Having a ring around your striker not use this microphone yet having a ring around your striker isn't going to do anything but um, harmonize your tuning fork as it's within the field but as soon as your tuning fork's not in the field then it's not you know it's still not holding that space um so 
Yeah, that's that's really been a, a tough one to figure out the best way to utilize a ring with a tuning fork. Because I tell you, using the tensor fields with sound and vibration is phenomenal. I mean, it changes the color of sound. It it um, you know, when you use these tensor rings with like the crystal healing bowls, I mean it changes the quality of the field of that singing bowl. Um so, you know, it might be a, such a thing that uh, you get a finger ring, you know, or else like even one of those, yeah, just like even a, a one inch um, golden fire ring or one of the finger rings, because you can get a size, I think four finger ring, it's pretty small. And, you know, if you're able to put leather or something around the base of your tuning fork so that you can fit a finger ring onto there, then you'd have it right there too. Um, so that might be a way to utilize that JR. Um, yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you on the tuning forks. Renard being led to place a ring over all chakra points. Does it matter if they are different energetics? No, not at all. Um, all the tensor rings ever since the beginning, the tensor rings we've seen have, that whole ability to harmonize, align, and amplify chakras to bring chakras back to their 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 highest potential state. So, using any any ring, any tensor ring on a chakra is absolutely appropriate. And um, yeah, gosh, I'm trying to think. I believe it was anything after the harmony ring that came along. There was actually, um, we did a lot of work with the chakras back at that time when we first created the harmony rings. So there was a lot of the work that was put into the etheric templates having to do with chakras, because I mean, at that time that was something that we were really working on. And now then we've kind of, you know, we just kind of, know that the chakras are going to be perfect and aligned and where they need to be and how they need to be um, as we step into the fields. So, you know, we don't even really put our attention and awareness there anymore because it's part of our automatic thing. Um, you know, kind of like running energy to your food, blessing your food that, um, you know, I used to tell, tell about how I wore a harmony coil and at the time I was always running energy into the food and sending it back to when it was first brought out of the ground or first born or whatever it is. And, um, sending that throughout time until it got to my plate. And so that's something that that harmony coil instilled into my field. So my field, it's just kind of programmed, let's say into my field, to do that with food. And that's kind of what we've done with our fields too. And with the tools is that we've just kind of put that whole thing with the chakras in there. Cause I mean, we've even had to do a thing like a chakra replacement with my mom once. And I don't know how that works, but <laughs> we did it. Um, and so all of those potentials and possibilities are put into those tools too. But, um, yeah, using using the rings over the chakras, it really doesn't matter the the energetic. And there's so many people that do that because we have a lot of people who buy tensor rings for their light beds, for their light tables. Um, you know, and and even the beta coils were originally used for sound amplification underneath of tables for the specific chakras. And so um, you know, you can even you can even take a ring and place it on the head and align all your chakras too, which is a fun thing to do. I mean, that I think we have an old video about that too, about aligning chakras. But basically, that's something that you can do is you can just put a ring on your head. Imagine that column going down all the way through and then it's just aligning chakras and amplifying and bringing everything to its highest potentials. Cleaning, clearing. So... Yeah, anyway, I'm going to jump back over here to chat real quick. Just have to read through all the wonderful chat that's been happening over here. Yeah, so that 
that light workers academy please do join us because yeah we're not going to be light warriors we're going to be truly getting into um working with our immediate field of everything that's perceived outside of us as being dark and dense and we're going to start there for those who want to who feel like everything's outside of them and we're going to bring everything back to the internal so that by the time we're done with this this coursework it's going to be all about clearing our outside reality through the internal through our own light um, our consciousness let's see uh, samson had a story he gifted a badar coil to a friend that was bedlocked and everything and everything felt stagnant and a couple hours later she messaged and said thank you because her pain disappeared <laughs> that's awesome um Fernando says, I love my finger ring. It pairs so well with my silver Hedica elemental ring. It layers beautifully and feels magical. Um, on Victoria, you're using um, for the tuning fork. You're going to put a boot around the base of the tuning fork to hold the, uh, to hold the finger ring on. That's fantastic. Well, everybody, I think we got all the questions covered for today. Um, gosh, I think probably Wednesday we're going to do another one of the um, Lightworker Academy videos. And this time, so you can go back and check it out on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Um, but this time we're going to be doing that Divine Earth Alchemy Meditation. Um, we're going to talk about duality and the chalice energetics. And so we're going to be doing some work with that chalice energy. Um, and then we're going to step into that wisdom field and do that zero point meditation, which we did exactly a year ago. Well, a year and two weeks ago. Um, and then we're going to talk more about light anchors. So anyway, uh, hope you can join us then. And I don't think I have anything else, but thank you guys for all being here today. And I hope the new microphone is working out. All right. I know we had some problems on light workers Academy. So, um, I think we get all the bugs out and otherwise, man, Merry Christmas. You guys, I hope it's a great, beautiful one. Um, yeah, things are going to start getting pretty amazing. I know that we're going to be going through some pretty, humanity is going through some pretty rocky rocky roads right now but it's all beautiful it's the spring cleaning you gotta make a mess you gotta recognize things things are coming up to be seen and to be given gratitude for and to be released on the scale of humanity and so anyway merry christmas everybody we'll see you soon take care <laughs>